Hey everybody, Nick here. It's Monday night. We are live on the Davis Park Church of Christ uh, Facebook, or excuse me, YouTube page. And we do this in an effort to stay connected, to divert ourselves to God, to His Word, and to prayer. I am still considering things from Nehemiah, so if you want to grab your Bible, turn to the book of Nehemiah chapter 2. We'll pick up there. This again is uh, an extension we're building on to the things we talked about last Wednesday evening and Thursday evening. Uh, and uh, what we can glean from the book of Nehemiah as Nehemiah uh, encourages the people to rebuild the wall. So Nehemiah chapter 2 is where I'm going to be. I think I've selected a song that goes right along with uh, the, the things that we're going to be talking about this evening. And so let's worship our God, and then I'll meet you in Nehemiah chapter 2 in just a minute. For us here in Nehemiah chapter 2. You know, that song, uh, there was the, the line in the second verse about pressing on, still looking up in prayer. And so what's interesting is as we come to Nehemiah chapter 2 is Nehemiah is still looking up in prayer. Uh, he was cut bare to the king. I talked about that uh, just briefly last uh, Thursday. And so in the month of Nisan, in the 20th day, a 20th year of King Artaxerxes, when wine was before him, I took up the wine and gave it to the king. 
Now, I had not been sad in his presence. The king said to me, Why is your face sad, seeing you are not sick? There's nothing but sadness of the, of the heart. This is, there, this is nothing but sadness of the heart. Then I was very much afraid. I said to the king, Let the king live forever. I should not, my, why should not my face be sad? When the city, the place of my father's graves, lies in ruins, and its gates have been destroyed by fire. The king said to me, What are you requesting? Now, this is where we uh, get just a, a bit of expansion on what we talked about last Thursday about the, uh, the concept of prayer and especially revolving around the idea of acts, ACTS, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, supplication. Because notice, so I prayed to the God of heaven. He's right there in the presence of the king, and he prays. We might call this a, a flare prayer. Right? He's throwing up a flare, and it's just a brief thing, right? I don't think he... I don't think it was a big production where he got down on his knees right before the king and prayed this uh, long extended prayer. I think it's probably something like, Lord, have mercy. Uh, have mercy on me, your servant. Uh, God, help me. Lord, give me the words that I need here. Something, something just very brief, right? Just that flare prayer. And, uh, you know, we, we talked about this uh, a little bit about how Nehemiah is finally dispatched by the king. Uh, i, I got to love this right here, verse 6. Um, how long will you be gone? When will you return? Apparently, Nehemiah was good at his job, and the king didn't want to see him go. Right? Um, at least I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt. There is sometimes what, what can happen in, in leadership. This may be a control thing. And so he's like, you know, I want a, I want a timeline here. Give me the timeline for when you're going to be gone, when you're coming back. And so, chapter 2, Nehemiah goes back. He makes survey of the wall. Um, you know, I, I went to Jerusalem, was there three days, probably in prayer and fasting. We, we know that Nehemiah is a, a man of faith. He's a man of prayer. We've seen that already. And then he goes, he surveys the wall with a couple few guys. And uh, chapter 3 is where they get to work. He sets all the different people in, in different places and I invite you to go through that. We talked, to, we talked about what, what's going on there with all the names of the folks. We did talked about that at some length on Wednesday night of last week. And I invite you to go watch that video and see what we talked there about the roll call and why that's significant. I actually want to come here to chapter 4. Here we are. And now let's talk about when, when people engage in the work of God and, and they want to do God's work to His glory... But there's, there's usually a, a response. There's a reaction. You know, I think about those who have faced stiff opposition in the past, maybe in terms of the Lord's work, maybe not. You know, when, when the Allied forces stormed the beaches of Normandy, they faced stiff opposition uh, by the Axis powers entrenched there. Uh, in a similar fashion, when the Marines were island hopping and storming the beaches like Iwo Jima, they also faced very severe opposition from the, the Japanese forces that were entrenched on those islands. And so, when Nehemiah and the Israelites are rebuilding the wall around Jerusalem, they also faced tough opposition from the enemies around them. I think a similar thing can happen when we seek to do God's work to God's glory today. We aim to uh, build the church. We aim to engage in outreach. But what can happen is we can, we can face opposition. And, and indeed, we, we will face opposition. We'll have opposition from folks. Um, Nehemiah has planted the vision among the people. We need to rebuild the wall here around the city of Jerusalem. And the people have responded. We see chapter 3, the, the names of all the folks who got busy doing the work of rebuilding the wall. This, uh, this chapter, chapter 4 of Nehemiah, it, it shifts the focus just a little bit. And we see what happens when God's people do God's work God's way. Uh, the, there's going to be a reaction by, uh, well, shall we call them... Uh, the seed of the serpent. 
Because that's the great conflict that's been ongoing ever since the beginning. The seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent. And <clears throat> we see here, well, verse 1, Now when Sanballat heard that we were building the wall, he was angry and greatly enraged, and he jeered at the Jews. You know, there are a lot of Sanballats in the world. You know, we've... Uh, We've engaged in good work here in Modesto, especially as it pertains to the homeless population. Well, uh, just a little behind the scenes baseball here, right? <clears throat> um, we've, we've, incurred, we've encountered some uh, opposition. I believe that uh, it wasn't like Sanballat where just out of pure sheer hatred that these folks were doing what they did, but I do believe that uh, the, the folks were well-intentioned, as, as well-intentioned as they could be, uh, but uh, they, they were somewhat of a thorn in our side. And I think we've, we've worked through it. We've done our best to be good neighbors, right? Um, but what can happen is, and I've, I've seen it in the church, you, you start a good work and, and you face opposition. Next thing you know, well, we... We ought to stop. We we shouldn't. We shouldn't. But people are complaining. You know, we, we really ought to stop. Instead of searching for a solution, and so Sanballat he begins to jeer at <clears throat> the people of God, and he said in the presence of his brothers and of the army of Samaria, "What are these feeble Jews doing? Will they restore it for themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they finish up in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of rubbish?" And burned ones at that? So that's the opposition here. A lot of questions, right? What are, what are, what are they doing? Don't they know what they're doing? Don't they know the products that they're working with? Uh, so Tobiah, the Ammonite, was beside him and he said, Yes, what they are building. If a fox goes up on it, he will break down their stone wall. So even a small fox, if he jumps up on that wall, it's just the wall's just going to give way. It's just going to cave and collapse. So notice, here's another prayer. Verse 4 of chapter 4, Hear, O our God, for we are despised. So the first prayer that Nehemiah prays here is, uh, Here, listen. <clears throat> notice what Nehemiah does not do. He doesn't get mad. Why, those no good such and such, right? Um... He doesn't become discouraged. Ah, shucks, what are you going to do? I knew we couldn't do this. I just... He's not defeated. Well, pack it up. I guess I'm heading back to the king's palace so I can be about uh, bearing the cup and all that. He took this right to the Lord. And this is verses 4 and 5 are a prayer. <clears throat> Excuse me. Turn back their taunt on their own heads. Here's the second part of the prayer. Give them up to be plundered in a land where they are captives. Oof. It's a serious prayer. Uh, it is right in line with the uh, imprecatory psalms that you find peppered throughout the book of Psalms. You know, uh, Lord, uh, break their arm, uh, break their teeth, right? Take, here, here, take their taunts and turn them back on them. And give them up to be plundered. Uh, do, do not cover their guilt. And let their sin, let not their sin be blotted out from your sight, for they have provoked you to anger in the presence of the builders. And here's, this is a very fundamental principle, it's all throughout Scripture. It, it, this is an echo of what happened with Samuel, with the people, where God says, look, Samuel, they, they've not rejected you, they've rejected me as their king. Back in 1 Samuel chapter 8. So Nehemiah has a firm grasp that the, the enemies here, the opponents the, that are, uh, that are bringing this external pressure upon them, they are not opposing us so much as they're opposing God. Yes, their jeers may be falling on our ears, but they're ultimately, God, they're, they're against you. They provoked you to anger. So, we built the wall. Uh, and, and this is a good spot here just to remind us, Acts, right? Um... You, you don't see it uh, too much here, but 
oh, our God, I mean, Im implied in that whole phrase is that he's the covenant God, right? This is a, a member of the covenant community. Nehemiah is a Jewish man, and he is praying to his God. Um, the confession here, we're despised. We're despised by our, by our enemies. Um, not a lot of thanksgiving here, <laughs> just, just a lot of supplication. Uh, so uh, that, that formula, it's not formulaic, okay? It, it, it doesn't always fit, and in fact, sometimes we don't always follow it. Sometimes we're so crushed under the pressure that we just, God help us, right? Uh, so that's okay too. I, I, I don't want to give the impression here, right? Uh, and, and that's why I mentioned the flare prayer earlier. That, that uh, acronym is not intended to become formulaic. It's, it's merely a tool to help us in our prayer life. Uh, but uh, we see here the real raw emotion of Nehemiah. So we built the wall. What do we do? Well, uh, don't stop working. Uh, they, they didn't fall into the trap of just laying down their tools and, you know, what are we going to do? And also, we see, they didn't fall into the trap of just praying only. Well, you know, all we got to do is pray and, you know, God's going to miraculously put stone upon stone. They understand that the Lord accomplishes his work through means. Uh, and, and they are the means, the people are the means, whereby God is accomplishing his work of restoring his city. That's a very key fundamental principle that we need to keep firmly in our minds, too, that the Lord operates through means. He, he doesn't say, you know, uh, that, that um, I'm just going to do all the work for you, and you just got to sit back and, and let things, let the converts roll in, as it were. No, he... The one who has all authority in heaven and on earth says, go. I am going to use you to make disciples of all nations. And uh, it, it's not that the Lord himself is literally standing there doing the baptizing, right? He says, no, you, you, when you go and you're making disciples, guess what? You're, you're going to be the ones baptizing them and teaching them to observe all things I've commanded. Uh, and, and certainly don't, don't get it twisted. Uh, we are the means, the people are the means whereby God is building his kingdom. And also his word. We, all we do is take the word out into the world, and it does its supernatural work of convicting and, and converting the hearts and souls of people. Right? So it, it, it's, it's not all dependent upon us. But we need to keep in mind that we are the means whereby God is accomplishing his work. So we built the wall, the text says. All the wall was joined together to half its height, for where the people had a mind to work. They didn't get discouraged, just like Nehemiah didn't get discouraged. The people don't. They face adversity, but they keep on building the wall. And they are confident that um, anywhere with Jesus, we home sweet home, right? Anywhere with Yahweh. Uh, they, they can, they'll be taken care of. And God will take care of their enemies. And when Sanballat and Tobiah and the Arabs and the Ammonites, the Ashdodites, heard that the rebuilding of the walls of, uh, the repairing of the walls of Jerusalem was going forward, and the breaches were beginning to be closed, they were very angry, I bet, right? Um, and so they all plotted together to come and fight against Jerusalem to cause confusion in it. And we prayed to our God, more prayer. And I, I mentioned that uh, on last Wednesday evening, every step of the way, the people are rejoicing in God and they're glorifying God and worshiping God. Prayer's a part of that worship too. And every step of the way, they're saturating this work that they're doing to God's glory in prayer. Uh, and so we pray to our God and set, a, and set a guard as a protection. Notice, again, it's, it's we pray as though God's the only one working, and then we work uh, as though it's all dependent upon us, even though we know it's not, right? Uh, and so I, I think you see here, um, as the people of God are doing their work to the glory of God, they're doing all that the Lord is strengthening them to do, and God is providing. Uh, abundantly for his people. Uh, so we set a guard as protection against them day and night. 
In Judah it was said, the strength of those who bear the burdens is failing. There's too much rubble by ourselves. We will not be able to rebuild the wall. And this is now, um, it seems like there's some internal pressure, right? In Judah, this is where it's being said. And then the, you have the external pressure, our enemy said, they will not know or see till we come among them and kill them and stop the work. So um, was this some of the enemies kind of doing covert ops? Uh, producing kind of this, uh, these false narratives among the people? Could have been. Could be the people themselves. It's just very interesting that the, the enemies are doing this stealth thing, right? They won't know. They will not know. Verse 12, at that time, the Jews who lived near them came from all directions and said to us ten times, you must return to us. <laughs> ten times, that's uh, ten number of uh, perfection, completion. And so this is a, uh, it is a, a complete uh, petition here. And so in the lowest parts of the space behind the wall, in open places, I station the people by their clans with their swords, their spears, their bows. Okay, so they're, they're armed. And uh, I looked and arose and said to the nobles and the officials and the rest of the people, do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord who is great and awesome. So there's some adoration there, recognition of who God is. Fight for it, your brothers, your sons, your daughters, your wives, your homes. When our enemies heard that it was known to us and that God had frustrated their plan, we all returned to the wall, each to his work. There it is. They, they got back to work in, in rebuilding the wall and repairing it. And from that day on, half of my servants worked on construction, half held the spears, shields, bows, and coats of mail. And the leaders stood behind the whole house of Judah, who were, built, re, who were building on the wall. Those who carried burdens were loaded in such a way that each labored on the work with one hand and held his weapon in the other. So they are ready, they are prepared, and at the same time, they are busy about the work. Each of the builders had his sword strapped to his side, uh, while he built, and uh, the man who sounded the trumpet was beside me. Now, um, you guys have you have guys wearing multiple hats, and you have all the folks devoting themselves fully to the work. And so, uh, the work is great, widely spread. Uh, our God will fight for us. Notice that. Remember how I said, you know, they're, they're working as if it's all dependent upon them, but they recognize the battle belongs to the Lord. Okay? Uh, and so uh, they're, they're, they're working. They're, they prepared themselves, armed themselves even against their enemies. They have very dangerous enemies around them. But it's always with the recognition we are but dust and uh, we need to be mindful of our, of our frame, and the Lord is mindful of our frame. And so we need the Lord to fight for us. So we labor at the work, half of them held spears, from the break of dawn till the stars came out. Uh, and where is it? Uh, they work... Did I go right past, or is it at the end of chapter 5? Uh, bottom line is, they, they work until uh, the wall was uh, halfway, uh, half its height all the way around, and uh, they did that because they didn't want to leave uh, parts exposed. And I don't think I'm going to be able to find it here. Oh, just off to, uh, just at a glance here. Uh, I'll encourage you to, to track that down for me. Maybe you can leave it in the comments or something. But um, they didn't want parts in ruin and parts rebuilt. They, they worked uh, in union, in, in, uh, in a unified effort. Uh, and, and I think that's, that's another critical principle here uh, when it comes to uh, the, the work that we do. No half measures, right? No half measures, but rather, uh, when we are doing God's work to God's glory, we want to ensure that there are no uh, holes in the wall, as it were. Uh, that is, we, we want a, a total effort. Uh, we want a, a robust 
approach to uh, outreach. Uh, and so, and, and, and I believe you see this in the Great Commission. You go and you make disciples of all nations and you baptize those disciples in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And it doesn't stop there. We don't just leave folks to drip dry in the pews, so to speak, right? Teaching them to observe all things I've commanded you. This is the total uh, united work of making disciples. Making disciples is the, the main verb in the Great Commission. The going, the making, or the, the uh, baptizing, and the teaching are all essential components of that. And so, you know, if, if you're going to go, if you're going to make disciples, you need to go, right? And if you're going to make disciples, involved in that is it will lead them invariably to the waters of baptism. And if you're going to make disciples, part of the discipling process is you continue to teach them. That is a total effort. And, and so, you know, it, I, I don't want to allegorize the, the historical record there in Nehemiah, but if there's an application point, just as the people were involved in a total effort of, uh, you know, stacking bricks with one hand and ready with their weapon in the other hand, uh, and, you know, they're wearing those multiple caps, in the same way, we are called to wear the multiple caps of, as we make disciples, which is, if you will, our rebuilding of our wall today, the rebuilding of the church, um, then going, I mean, that's implied in it, but the, the baptizing, uh, the, the, the conversion of these disciples um, that culminates in the baptistry. Uh, we're doing that on the one hand, and on the other hand, we're continuing the maturation process by teaching uh, people to observe all things that the Lord has commanded. Uh, and so, you know, with the one hand, we're making disciples unto baptism, and then on the other hand, we are teaching and, and continue the maturation process, if you want to think about it that way. So, um, a, lot of, a lot of key principles here in Nehemiah that I think are uh, applicable for us today, and I present them for your kind consideration. Let's go to our prayer requests here, and we do have our uh, work cut out for us here. Uh, as always, we have a number of things that we want to, a uh, number of requests that we want to take to the Lord in prayer. So let's get to that right where you are. I want, you, I want to invite you to invite the uh, Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit to come and to be with you. And as we draw near to God, God draws near to us. O Lord, God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven, on earth, or under the earth. We confess, along with Nehemiah, you are the great and awesome God. We thank you that your ear is toward us. You hear our prayers when we call upon you, and you answer our petitions mightily. We want to lift up to you these various requests, and we want to commit each one of these to your merciful care. We are mindful of those who are mourning the loss of loved ones. For the family and friends of Lee Crown, for Vicki Sanders, for the family and friends of Bill Weingart, and for John and Kayla Hatter and family, we pray. We lift these up to you, Father. As they walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we pray that you would remind them of your abiding presence. In fact, Father, we pray that you would even use this as a time to draw them near to you, to uh, remind them of your abiding presence, and that you would comfort them during this time. Uh, we uh, rejoice that uh, uh, we have several who have come through surgery and are recovering. We pray for Roselle Wade, for uh, Tammy Pan Vanderford's daughter, for Tina Vargas, and for Mike Cobley. And we pray, Father, that you would continue to speed all of these along in recovery. For those who have made uh, good recovery so far, we give you praise for that. Lord God, there are those who are battling cancer, and uh, we want to lift each of these up to you by name. Bill Mara, Ron Treadway, Lynn Brocco, Dwight McBride, Chrissy Hagan, Joyce, Bruce, Leslie Raddick, Steve McLean, Dan Poulter, Danny Adams, Leslie Wilde, Julia Galloway, uh, Bill Hunt, Renee, and Mason. We 
don't know every situation, Father, but you do, and we rejoice and give you thanks that you do. And we pray that where there is sorrow, you would grant joy. Where there is despair, you would grant hope. Where there are doubts, we pray you would grant faith. According to your sovereign will and power, we pray that you would grant healing as you deem fit. There are those who are struggling with COVID-19 right now, Father, and we lift them up to you as well for Helen Hinton's brother Harold, Peggy Martin, Charles Cook, we pray. And ask that you would raise them up from the sickbed, Father, and that they would recover quickly from uh, this virus. We pray for our sister Kathy D that she would make full recovery after the many stroke that she suffered for uh, Leslie. We pray that uh, she would be delivered of a healthy baby. For Carol Day, we pray that you would ameliorate the pain that she is in. For Sebastian, we pray that you would strengthen his uh, little body. For Michael, we pray that uh, he would make a full recovery after his accident. For uh, Jim Connor, we pray that uh, you would be involved in that uh, situation. You would raise, well, that you would be merciful to him, Father, as it looks like he's in his last days. For Brenda Smith, we pray that the date that is fixed, September 12th, would come and that she would have uh, the back surgery that she's been needed been needing for a while. For Myrna Westmoreland, Father, we pray that you'd be merciful. For Monty Corley, we pray that uh, the... Uh, what, what what illness is plaguing him, we pray that it would be identified quickly and that he would make full recovery for Elsa and her family. We pray that they continue to make the uh, adaptation following the adoption of this baby girl, uh, that it would be a good, smooth transition. For Gary, uh, Michael Brown's co-worker, we pray that the test results are beneficial for him. For Carly Holmes, we pray that she make full recovery from uh, her car accident for uh, Brittany, Father, we pray that uh, you would heal not only the physical, but also the emotional, and most especially the spiritual uh, wounds that she is experiencing. For Jeannie DeMars, we pray that you would be merciful to her mother. For Chris, we pray that uh, full uh, that the rehabilitation process would be beneficial for him. For Betty Bennett, we pray that the tests would be beneficial for her. For Anna Gladys Leonis, we continue to pray for uh, her situation and ask that you be involved. For Dan, uh, Donnie Shook, we pray that uh, the dialysis would be beneficial for him. For Lee Boydston, grant uh, her strength. For Charles and Tamara Cook and Helen Potter, longtime servants in your kingdom, Father, we pray that you continue to be merciful to them as well. We pray for the church that uh, you would grant revitalization, that we would be about rebuilding the, the, the church. Mindful, Father, that any success that we have is from you, that you are the one who is building your kingdom right here. Grant the, the, the leadership, Holy Spirit, wisdom to know the times and know what the church should do, and for the Ukraine-Russia situation, Father, indeed there are wars around the world, and we pray that People would beat their swords in the plowshares, having been converted by the gospel to Christ. We pray that peace would reign in our world. For that means that Christ must rule. So we pray, Father, that he would put all of his enemies under his feet. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on us. Abba, we belong to you. We are our beloveds, and his, disciple, uh, his, his desire is for us. Glory to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and evermore shall be. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, thanks again for joining me on this Monday night. I know there's a lot you can be doing on a Monday night, and I'm glad you chose to spend just a little bit of time with me this evening. We will be on air Wednesday night here on the YouTube channel for our midweek Bible study, but we invite you to come and be part of it uh, in person. And uh, come on down, Bible classes for all ages, 7 o'clock Wednesday night at the church building. Uh, and so um, I think that's going to do it for me this evening. The Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious. May God richly bless you, my beloved siblings. Until next time, have a good evening. God bless.